Hi everyone, this is our lecture on DNA repair, so let's get started. To get a clinical perspective, let's look at a quick flash case. Let's say an eight-year-old girl is brought to the clinic by her parents for a wellness visit after immigrating to the United States two weeks ago. While her siblings have clear skin, the girl has freckles and extreme sensitivity to sunlight, developing severe sunburn after only a short period of time. Let's keep this in mind as we go through the lecture. Our learning objectives for this lecture are to compare and contrast various DNA repair mechanisms and to correlate defective DNA repair mechanisms with clinical conditions. Remember, our DNA is in a double helix, so when repairing DNA, we can go about it either as double strand or as a single strand. Our double stranded mechanisms include non homologous end joining and homologous recombination, and our single stranded mechanisms include nucleotide excision repair, base excision repair, and mismatch repair. Let's start with our double stranded DNA repair first and focus here on non homologous end joining. Now, non homologous end joining brings together two ends of DNA fragments to repair double stranded breaks. So, here, let's picture a double stranded break. Non homologous end joining will bring together the ends to repair it. Now, I didn't say it was exactly where it was supposed to go, I didn't even say it was the part that broke. It could have been some other double strand laying around. Because in non homologous end joining, homology is not required. Some DNA may be lost in the process. This repair mechanism is defective in ataxia telangiectasia. The next of our double stranded DNA repair mechanisms is homologous recombination. As the name implies, it requires two homologous DNA duplexes. As you can see in this image, a strand from damaged double stranded DNA is repaired using a complementary strand from intact homologous double stranded DNA as a template. This allows the restoration of duplexes accurately without the loss of nucleotides. This mechanism is defective in breast and ovarian cancers with the BRCA1 mutation and in Fanconi anemia. Now let's move on to our single strand DNA repair mechanisms and discuss nucleotide excision repair first. Let's look at this image to see what happens. So some sort of damage like UV exposure occurs to damage a nucleotide. What happens next is that specific endonucleases release the oligonucleotides containing the damaged bases and then DNA polymerase fills the gap and DNA ligase reseals the gap. This allows us to repair bulky helix distorting lesions and this occurs in the G1 phase of the cell cycle. Nucleotide excision repair is defective in xeroderma pigmentosum. In this disease, patients are unable to repair DNA pyrimidine dimers caused by UV exposures and so they present with dry skin, photosensitivity, and skin cancer. The next of our single strand DNA repair mechanisms is base excision repair. Let's take a look at this image where it seems one base has deaminated. In this case, a base specific glycosylase removes the altered base and creates an AP site, which stands for apurinic or apyramidic, depending on the base. One or more nucleotides are removed by AP endonuclease which cleaves the five prime end. Then AP lyase cleaves the three prime end. Then DNA polymerase beta fills the gap and DNA ligase seals it. I know that sounds like a lot of enzymes that are hard to keep in order, so we do use the mnemonic gel please to remind us of the order. G for glycosylase to remove the altered base, E for endonuclease, L for lyase, P for polymerase, and L again for ligase. Base excision repair occurs throughout the cell cycle and is important in the repair of spontaneous or toxic deamination. The last DNA repair mechanism we'll discuss is the single-stranded mismatch repair. Like in our last examples, 
let's take a look at this image to help guide our discussion, where it seems one set is mismatched. In this case, mismatched nucleotides, a newly synthesized or unmethylated strand, are removed and the gap is filled and resealed. This occurs predominantly in the S phase of the cell cycle and is defective in Lynch syndrome, previously called hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer, often abbreviated HNPCC. Lynch syndrome is autosomal dominant and approximately 80% progresses to colorectal cancer. Can you remember which genes are mutated? It's great if you're thinking of MLH1 and MSH2. Great, let's do a quick flash quiz. Which DNA repair mechanism is defective in ataxia telangiectasia? Great if you thought of non-homologous end joining. It's important that you compare the defective DNA repair mechanisms with its affiliated clinical disease. Well, let's return to this case. She seems very photosensitive, even has areas of dry skin on her face. Now, a lot of things can cause photosensitivity, especially certain drugs, but we should also consider the possibility of defective DNA repair causing xeroderma pigmentosum, leaving this patient with the inability to repair DNA damage, like the damage that can be caused by UV light. Which specific repair mechanism is defective if this is the case? Yep, it would be nucleotide excision repair. As always, we need a more thorough clinical history and get more details, but this can certainly be a consideration. Well, we've made it to the end. What's the bottom line? Double-stranded DNA repair mechanisms include non-homologous end joining and homologous recombination. Single-strand DNA repair mechanisms include nucleotide excision repair, base excision repair, and mismatch repair. And defective DNA repair can result in a number of clinical diseases. That's all I have for you here. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and it'll give you the opportunity to submit a comment if you have any feedback or questions. Thanks for joining me. Study hard.